Welcome, you're listening to John Highman from Commercial Real Estate Online. If you're visiting us for the first time, you'll find our main website at commercial-realestate-training.com. And at that website, we strive to give real estate agents and brokers around the world uh, good information regards sales, leasing and property management within commercial real estate. And of course, here's the website here if you haven't seen it before. Uh, there's plenty of tips, tools and ideas at the website uh, for you to get. And a lot of them are, are free and available to give you some ideas in the market today. So that is the website commercial-realestate-training.com. And my name is John Highman. So this is another video to help agents and brokers with particular issues and topics in the market today. And this is all about cold calling. In my view, cold calling is a game changer, particularly if you are a broker or an agent and you're looking to strive to improve your market share in sales or leasing activity. Not so much property management, really, because property management is more of a, a relationship a situation where you build relationships with clients over time and they share their uh, listings with you to manage over time. But certainly in sales and leasing, uh, cold calling is a game changer. So let's talk about that a bit more. In commercial real estate agency and brokerage, the cold calling process, as I said, is a game changer when it comes to growing your market share and getting quality clients. If you want to rise to the top of your market faster, you should learn how to cold call quickly and effectively and practice the process and make it a key part of your business processes. Now practicing of course is critical to doing anything. It doesn't matter whether you're learning to play golf or basketball or tennis, the whole thing needs to be learnt. The same thing applies to cold calling. Now I have said that it is a game changer. So how do you do it? There are some special skills to learn. And of course over time once you learn those skills you can improve them. And of course, the big question is, what exactly do you say as part of the cold calling process? Certainly in commercial real estate, you want to sound as though you are professional, you're relevant and you understand the local market. And then the question always arises, who do you call? Who should you talk to? Why should they take your call? Interesting questions. So it's a game changer and you can do something with that. If you are striving to make next year a better year from a listing point of view in sales and leasing activity across office, industrial or retail property, then now is the time to take a serious look at cold calling and improving your skills in that regard. So let's go a bit further here. Building it. So making calls to clients and prospects each and every day can allow you to build your business, your reputation and your market share. The calling process can be merged into your diary and should be every day as the central business building habit to give you that extra client contact and prospect contact, contact that you need. That being said, practice is definitely required. It doesn't come easy. It's something you need to learn. So I would expect you to build your reputation as a top agent so that your clients and prospects know exactly who you are and how to contact you. I would expect you also through cold calling to build your business opportunity, uh, be it in sales, leasing or property management. Make sure that you're knowing a lot of the key people in the market, the quality people, the, the people with the top properties. Get to know them. Use cold calling as something to open the door with those people. And of course, in building your market share, you should focus on the properties that really matter. Uh, the segments of the market that you can serve effectively, the quality listings, the quality clients, and to do that, you will need to understand the market from a knowledge point of view. So that's building it. That's what cold calling allows you to do. So the key people. Exactly who should you call? Well, you can call key people in the industry, the local area, the people that are in the area that you should relate to and share business with over time. Now, starting at number one, the business owners. There are plenty of business owners who, who occupy premises uh, from a manufacturing point of view or perhaps an office uh, business point of view, you need to get to know them, understand what they do, how they do it, what sort of premises they need for it. Now, you cold call those business owners. Some of them might own the property they're in, some of them might lease the property in, they're in. Either way, you can do something for them. Of course, the next category to focus on is the property investors, the property investors in your local area. 
Now they will have tenants in property and of course you will be talking to those tenants anyway from time to time uh, and you can talk to property investors to see if they need new tenants. Perhaps they are struggling with the investment performance and thereby you can bring in your property managers to help with the investment performance. Some other key people to call, uh, property developers. From time to time property developers will come and go from the market and that's just fine. It really depends on the opportunities of the market for them from a, uh, a return, from a, from a valuable point of view where they can make more money out of the property development. Of course, solicitors are great people to keep in contact with. Their characters and their accessibility might be a bit unusual uh, because uh, solicitors are a bit that way by character. However, you can, over time, break through to a number of solicitors locally who have clients that own property. Therefore, if you can establish the right sorts of relationships with those solicitors, you will build opportunity and potentially they will refer their clients to you, providing, of course, they can trust you and, and actually believe that you are a top agent, someone who can serve their clients well over time. <clears throat> the same should be said for accountants. Certainly, accountants are uh, similar by category to solicitors. They have clients that require service in property and some of those clients may wish to invest some of their hard-earned money in extra property locally or perhaps change their investments over time. So get to know the accountants. Uh, number six, the owner occupiers. Now these are typically business owners who occupy premises from which they run their business. So check out the local phone book, the business phone book and start cold calling all of the business owners locally to find out who owns the property that they are in. And of course, uh, you might get some listings from that. And lastly, franchise groups. They are very valuable to know and understand. Some franchise groups require property for tenant occupation or property to purchase. Either way, you need to understand what those franchise groups are looking for by way of property occupation. Now, if of course they lease something, then they will likely have a standard lease and that will involve the types of improvements, the services and amenities that they require, the location, the lease terms and conditions, and they will likely have a standard lease as part of that process. So get to know them. So they are the key people, business owners, property investors, property developers, solicitors, accountants, owner occupiers and franchise groups. So let's go a little bit further. How? Now, the short list that I just gave you was uh, certainly a list where there's massive opportunity and interaction that can be had with those key people across sales, leasing and property management. So from that point, you've got to say, well, how do you find all those key people? How do you get out there and locate them? Well, I've put a few tips here to help you. You can segment your areas, that being geographic, geographically, so you can understand how to break those areas down into pockets of properties and uh, people and you can make the direct calls into those uh, segmented areas. Next, you can segment your people into categories. Now, of course, I gave you those categories just a short while ago. So use the business telephone book as the, the category uh, guidance tool to drill down on your cold calls. And then, of course, you can segment your properties by type and location. And, of course, always remember that quality properties will create better inquiry. And many agents uh, come to understand that over time and therefore they start to uh, focus on those better properties that bring in good inquiries from advertising and marketing and create more inspections. And from that, of course, you can grow your database. That's exactly what you need. Now, identify some targets. Uh, within your local area, there will be certain targets that are useful. Perhaps some vacant land, some development land, perhaps some property owners that are portfolio owners. They own a number of properties locally and may require extra help from time to time. And of course, those prominent business identities that are very active in the market. Certainly, they may be dealing with some other agents at this current time, but there's no reason why they can't deal with you as well. And over time, if you build the right levels of trust with them, you can get somewhere. You can build those relationships and the relevance that those clients need from a property point of view. So those four points are quite important, but you have to go a bit further than that. As far as cold calling, you've got, then got to say, well, I need to set some KPIs. Now, KPIs stands for Key Performance Indicators. They are a set of targets or goals or rules that you work by and you can monitor your progress. So what sort of KPIs would you set as far as cold calling? Well, here's some examples. The numbers of calls that come in to you every day. 
the number of calls that you make outwards from your office every day, certainly prospecting calls. The number of deals that you actually do from making those calls, how many deals do you create over time? Of course, some of those calls will lead to listings and some of those calls will lead to meetings. If you look at these things productively, you can see that everything here is linked. The calls out will lead to meetings. The meetings will lead to listings. The listings will create opportunity, calls coming back into you. And of course, those listings will also create some done deals. So there are your KPIs. And over time, you should monitor your KPIs each month and each quarter so you know how things are improving for yourself. So that is the strategy on setting KPIs. So let's look at how you can take some action. Uh, certainly from KPIs, you can set the numbers, but without action, you won't get anywhere. So let's look at action. Uh, I would say that the processes of cold calling are quite difficult. And if you are new to the industry, you may struggle with the dialogue, the practice, the frequency, the, uh, the things that you need to do every day as part of cold calling. You need to take action. The only way you deal with call reluctance and making the necessary number of calls is to take action and grow with the action every day. Make more calls, make more contacts, improve your dialogue. I go back to the point that I made earlier, you need to practice and improve. And the last item on this list is indeed all about that, practicing and improving. I would expect every agent, every broker, to practice and improve their dialogue as part of a daily process each morning when they first arise. Before they go to the office, I would suggest that a degree of practice on your dialogue is very worthwhile. You can do it at home before you leave the office. So let's go back to the beginning here, right back to the beginning. And I said that cold calling is a game changer. So it is a fact in commercial real estate agency that you will need a solid base of leads and opportunities. Cold calling will give you that. The people that you know are most likely to be the people that you will do business with over time. And that's how you'll get those listings. So each day you should be looking for new people to talk to and cold calling is part of that process. So make the whole prospecting cold calling situation a big part of how you find those new people. It's a game changer. You can grow a lot of opportunity from doing it. So it should be said that many agents are very reluctant to make those calls. They have not developed the mindset or the success in the process. So they will do other things instead. They will avoid making calls. And of course, that is the biggest limiter on a career. If they don't make the calls, well, then they just struggle from a business point of view. They can't find the new people to talk to. And then they'll start blaming the market, the economy, uh, the competitors and everything else, but they won't blame themselves. Those agents that make the calls every day and a good number of them will always achieve a better market share over time. Now, someone always says uh, occasionally, well, how many calls should you make? Well, I will say here that you should devote at least two hours each day, that's each working day, to the call contact process. And at least 50% of that time should be devoted to talking to new people. I would encourage you to make 40 calls, 40 outbound calls as part of a two hour calling process. And of those 40 calls, at least half of them should be new people. The other half will be people that you've spoken to before and that you are growing the relationship with over time. So there you go. They are scary numbers, but uh, it's not too hard once you get the momentum up. And of course, you do need to practice your dialogue. So that's the end of the topic. As I said, cold calling is a game changer. Having been in the industry for a very long time, I understand sales and leasing and property management activity, activity very strongly. And I know that cold calling really does work. If you want to improve your listings and commissions over time, then certainly you can do it faster through cold calling. That being said, you do need to practice. So let's go back to the website here. Uh, please visit our website, which is commercial-realestate-training.com. You'll get plenty of free tips regards cold calling at that website. And of course, the email database there, the email system, the newsletter we send out, will be able to send those things to you on a regular basis. So don't be afraid of joining the database online. And of course, you'll get to be part of a very large community of agents and brokers from all over the world. And the emails we send out are very useful when it comes to building your market share in business. And as this uh, video is being recorded, we are at the end of 2013 and about to start 2014. And on that basis, most agents and brokers should be considering their marketing processes so that they are 
highly efficient, highly capable, very skilled and direct in their cold calling and prospecting processes. That's how you build your market share. So that's John Highman and uh, there's my photograph there. That's the website. Please visit the website. I'd like to catch up with you online and talk to you about what goes on out there in the marketplace. The commercial website is commercial-realestate-training.com. Thanks for joining us. That's John Highman signing off for now. I look forward to catching you again once, one day soon on this video broadcast. And certainly sign up to iTunes here where you can get plenty of these videos as I create them and send them out. That's John Highman signing off for now. Catch you next time online.